Chieng, an ancient city located in the middle of the Yangtze River area, was first established in the Southern Song Dynasty. In 1760, the 25th year of the reign of Emperor Qian Long of the Qian Dynasty, the governor of Anhui moved his office here from Jiangning. And for the next more than 170 years, Anqing became the capital of the province. Long before a city was ever built here, an observer had gazed upon the Yangtze River flowing through the area and said, this spot is an ideal location for building a city. And this is why the city was also called Yichang, literally meaning the perfectly located city. Today, a type of folk opera has become the new symbol of this city. In September 2006, a Huangmei Opera House opened here. This opera house was built by the Anqing Huangmei Opera Theatre in cooperation with a local real estate company. This was the first joint venture Huangmei Opera House to be financed by both a state-owned company and a private company. This happened exactly 80 years after Huangmei Opera had first been performed in Anqing City. Tale of a Silk Handkerchief is one of 36 feature operas of the Huangmei opera tradition and has remained popular for over a hundred years. After Huangmei opera was established in Anqing City, Tale of a Silk Handkerchief was performed more than any other Huangmei opera. The main character in this work is Chen Saijin and the best actor in this role was Ding Yongchuan, who was praised as the Mei Lanfang of Huangmei opera. Ding Yongchuan became the first Huangmei opera singer to achieve fame in Anqing City when he was 34 years old. In the spring of 1926, outside the northwestern Jixian Gate of Anqing City, then the capital of Anhui province, the peasants had already begun to harvest rape seeds. Outside Jishan Gate ran Ji Huai Road, which was Anhui's first modern road built with government funding. However, because there were no maintenance measures in place, this modern road built on the foundations of a formal royal post road soon wore out. Ji Huai Road was thus nicknamed Extremely Bad Road. Today, this road has been replaced by National Highway 206. In the warmth of the spring in that year, sounds of gongs and drums could be heard outside Jishan Gate. It was the sound of Huangmei opera troops setting up their stages for performances. Ding Yongchuan was a Hua Dan actor of one of these Huangmei opera troops. One day, after a grueling full day of performances, the master of the troops sighed and said, Peking opera troops can perform in the big theatres of Anqing City. Why can't we? Today, in the Anhui Provincial Library, there can be found a book called Old Pictures of Anqing, written by Chang Xiaosu, an author from Huaining in Anhui Province. This book contains a detailed description of Anqing City in the era of the Republic of China. As for the entertainment activities in Anqing in the 1920s, Chang Xiaosu wrote, Theatres were built one after another, but more classic operas were shown in these theatres than films. The old operas were predominantly Peking operas about immortal beings, swordsmen or love affairs. 
The stories mainly originated from novels, but the meanings and plots varied to a greater or lesser extent from the original stories. In 1912, the year the Republic of China was founded, 36-year-old Chiang Shao-su founded Anhui's first university, Jianghua University. It was located in Anqing. Three years later, it was renamed the State Law School of Anhui, and the famous writer Yu Dafu once taught there. During his teaching days at the school, Yu Dafu described in detail the theatre in Anqing at the time. Entering the North Gate in the clear air of the autumn. There could be heard gongs and drums from a small alley. If you stepped into that alley, you'd see a dilapidated old house before which sat a crowd of thirty to forty people. It was a theater. The lighting was poor, and the air was stuffy inside. The North Gate, referred to here by Yu Dafu, was Ji Xian Gate. At that time, Wang Mei Opera didn't even have a chance to be performed in a worn-out theatre of the type described by Yu Dafu. By the year 1926, Wang Mei Opera artists found this situation unbearable. Even though Wang Mei Opera was still labelled as erotic opera and banned, nothing could stop the artists from entering Ji Xian Gate any longer. Beijing Street was a major street facing Ji Xian Gate. Today, the street is a great place for local specialty snacks. Every day at dusk, booths selling specialty snacks start their business. Each vendor prepares food in his or her own unique way. In the autumn of 1926, Ding Yongjuan, a 34-year-old man from Huaining, led his troop into Anqing City along the street. Ding Yongjuan's wife, Ms. Rao, who was married to him for 10 years. Didn't go to Anqing with her husband. Instead, he stayed at their home in Huaining because their second child was almost due. Ten years later, this child made his debut as a Wang Mei actor in Shanghai. After Ding Yongjuan took his trip to Anqing City, he dared not perform in public for fear of the police. All he could do. Was to perform secretly in the private residences of people in the city. After Ding Yongjuan's troop entered Anqing City, they began to perform underground. But performing in such a way could not bring in a stable income, and this problem threatened their daily living. Because of this, some members of the troop wanted to give up, putting Ding Yongjuan in a very difficult situation. But right at this time, a chef at the Zhongxing Tea House located in Wuyue Street heard about Ding Yongjuan's Wang Mei Opera Troupe. Zhongxing茶楼里一个大厨师，葛大钱，这个人他喜好戏曲，对毁掉青年钱、高钱。华美戏都很喜爱
，这个人的话门路很广，他有办法的，想出些点子出来，把黄百姓搞进来去。为什么呢？因为这条路也在旅馆里当过茶房，他们都认识，一个当厨师，一个当茶房，这样子去这条路下海唱戏了。我来帮助你当感情来研究嘛。Out of their passionate love for Wang Mei Song, Gu Daxiang and Ding Yongchuan decided to take the risk of being arrested by the police. And perform Huang Mei Opera on the occasion of a private celebration. At the time, during holidays, festivals, or birthdays, people would hire opera actors to perform at their homes, hotels, or restaurants to enhance the celebration. At Gu Daxiang's arrangement, Ding Yongjuan's opera troupe was invited to a family living on Weijia Lane soon after they arrived in Anqing City. As it was not a public performance, the police didn't interfere. Wei Jia Lane was located in the southwestern corner of the old city of Anqing, very close to Ba Gua Gate. There was a Liancheng Hotel in the alley, and the owner was named Yan. Four years later, Yan and his wife had their first daughter, and she was named Yan Hongliao. This girl grew up to be the famous Huang Mei opera actress. Yan Feng Yin. After performing at such private celebrations a few times, Ding Yongchuan became more daring. Once again, with the help of Gu Daxiang, he rented the second floor of the Zhongxing Tea House and put out posters advertising a public performance. On the poster, he wrote his name as Ding Yulan, the lead singer. There are no records as to what operas they chose for their first public performance, but we do know that Mrs. Hu's advice to her sister-in-law was one of Ding Yongchuan's best works. So historians suppose that this was probably the opera he performed on that day. The Zhongxing Tea House of Anqing City became the place where Huang Mei Opera could be performed publicly in the city for the first time. For most of the residents of Anqing City, this was also their first chance to see Huang Mei Opera, an opera style that was very different from that of Peking Opera. The public performances gave the opera troupe a stable income, about three silver dollars a day. However, trouble found its way to Ding Yongjuan and his opera troupe. The police arrested him for singing erotic opera to corrupt society, and the troupe was banned. While the troupe was in a state of panic. A newspaper reporter who loved Wang Mei's song gave them some advice. This reporter, a reporter, is also a Xi citizen. He is of high cultural level. He gave the Xi people a plan. He said that the Hubei's flower garden after the earthquake can be opened up to the public. And our song, the Wang Mei song, is also the Anhui city anthem. It represents the Anhui city. It is the Anhui city's anthem. So we have changed it to Anhui. Anqing was the capital of Anhui Province at the time, and Wan was an abbreviated term for the province. Many spoken dialogues in the opera were delivered in the Anqing dialect, so it was reasonable to rename Huang Mei Opera as Wan Opera. Huang Mei opera is two parts, two parts. This part is the part that is used to speak of Anqing. For example, Anqing小北,用安青话来讲,人家很喜欢的,像大猪草里边,小毛儿嘞, 
，你把我篮子踩破了，我干去，我妈妈要把我打死了，你赔，你赔，这样就大家都能听得懂。The opera troupe took the newspaper reporter's advice and renamed Wang Mei Song Wang Opera. Surprisingly, the police accepted this explanation and released Ding Yongchuan without any charges. However, Ding Yongchuan and his opera troupe were not sure whether or not they should continue performing publicly. This was because the police gave them some very difficult conditions. In After Ding Yongchuan was released by the police, he presented a special performance of Mrs. He's advice to her sister-in-law for the newspaper reporter, who renamed Wang Mei's song as Wan Opera, as a way to thank him. Chuja 那种贤惠, In the following March, a few months after Wang Mei Opera was performed publicly, the National Revolutionary Army marched into the downstream area of the Yangtze River, and the Shanghai workers launched their third armed uprising as a way to cooperate with the National Revolutionary Army to occupy the city's Chinese territory. The National Revolutionary Army began to attack foreign institutions after they occupied Nanjing, and the vice president of Jinling University, Wen Huai'an, who carried American citizenship, was killed. In revenge, the British and American Navy began to bomb Nanjing City. The army of the warlord of Anhui surrendered without fighting, and thus the National Revolutionary Army occupied Anqing smoothly. In the chaos of war, the authorities loosened the ban on Huang Mei Opera, and more and more audiences gathered at the Zhongxing Tea House to watch Ding Yongchuan's performances. A silk handkerchief tells the story of Chen Saijin, who was happily married, until her husband demands a divorce after being deceived by a man with ill intentions. After the divorce, she and her two children live in difficulty in the countryside. After her two sons grow up, they go to participate in the royal examinations and meet with their father. The father and sons are ranked in the top three places in the royal examination. And at the end of the story, the father and sons recognize each other, punish the wrongdoer, and enjoy a family reunion. Tale of a Silk Handkerchief was one of Ding Yongchuan's best works. 
His performance as Qin Saijin impressed the audiences of Anqing deeply. At the time, in the first Peking Opera Dan Actors Competition, Mei Lanfang won first place among the four Peking Opera Dan stars, and he began to attract more impassioned fans. In Anqing, Ding Yongchuan, a Dan actor of Huang Mei Opera, was named the Mei Lanfang of Huang Mei Song. Ti 加以练习。作为一个农民出身，又为经过严格科班训练的早起黄皮演员来说，能做到这一点，已经是非常的可贵了。In March 1927, Zhongxing Tea House began an expansion project, and Ding Yongchuan and his troupe moved to a theatre to continue with their performances of the so-called One Opera. At the time, China was in chaos. Soon after the National Revolutionary Army occupied Shanghai, the right wing of the Nationalist Party, Kuomintang, launched the April 12th incident in Shanghai, and thereafter the Anqing incident to persecute the communists. This put Anqing city in a panic, and Ding Yongchuan's troop could no longer continue performing regularly. All of a sudden, survival became a primary concern. In the Huang Mei opera Tale of a Silk Handkerchief, Chen Saijin is forced out of her home because of her husband's distrust. In real life, Ding Yongchuan, who always played the role of Chen Saijin in the theatre, was forced out of Anqing City and went back to the countryside. <laughs> However, with his fame established in the city, Ding Yongchuan, after returning to the fields of the countryside, began to be worshipped by his fellow peasants. The local government of the KMT, however, issued orders explicitly banning the performance of Huang Mei Song. Despite this, they continued to be performed in the countryside. By 1931, professional opera troops were much stronger than four years before. That summer, a huge flood occurred on the Yangtze. In July, the rainfall reached twice the average of previous years, resulting in flooding in various rivers and lakes. The flood afflicted no less than seven provinces, including Hunan, Hubei, Jiangxi, and Anhui. Over 5,000 acres of farmland was flooded, and the whole of Wuhan was flooded for 133 days. In the wake of the flood, economic construction was held in the bayans. And Qing, always known as the throat of the Yangtze River, was no less afflicted. Farmlands were flooded, houses were swept away. Peasants became homeless. Many starved, and many more swarmed into Anqing City. Amidst the flood refugees were a number of Huang Mei opera artists. As they entered the city through Jishan Gate and Ba Gua Gate, they carried simple costumes. Among these Huang Mei opera artists, some people spotted Ding Yongchuan, the first man who sang Huang Mei opera in Anqing City. 
After that, professional Huang Mei opera troops began to perform in theatres again, and the opera style was still referred to as Wan Opera. One day, a new theatre named Broad Daylight by Ri Qingtian put out a poster with Ding Yongjuan's name on it. It was the second time Ding Yongjuan's name was printed on posters in Anqing City. Not far from Iran Theatre, there was a poster bearing the name Ye Bingchi, Ding Yongjuan's first Huang Mei opera teacher. Once again in this ancient city, the familiar melodies of Huang Mei opera were heard amidst the tolling of bells. But by that time, Huang Mei opera was no longer merely an assortment of rough old folk tunes. Instead, it had become a mature form of true opera. That year. Ling Yongchuan was 39 years old, and he once again performed in Tale of a Silk Handkerchief. As he did so, he must have felt overjoyed, just as Chen Sai Jin feels when she and her husband are reunited. Ling Yongchuan was born in Ding Jiazui, Huaining County, as he was the sixth child of the family. He was also called Ding Lao Liao, meaning Ding Number Six. When he was young, he went to a private country school for half a year, but the Ding family was too poor to raise so many children, and so Ding Yongjuan went to see Ye Bingchi and begged the master to take him as a student. He just wanted to reduce the family burden, and to go to school. 就找了当时一个有名的老艺人，叫叶秉池。那叶秉池呢，教了他，觉得说不行。你学习，你家里还没有准批准你，我也不好收你这个徒弟，又把他放回去了。他回到家里，感觉家里还没有，又无法生存，他就跟他家里商量，家里我们在家处在半饥饿状态，怎么办呢？家里又同意他学习了。于是，他弟兄六个，只有他一个人学了黄梅戏。When Ding Yongjuan first joined the opera troupe, Ye Bingchi asked him to play small gongs as the beginning of his training. Almost all the early Huang Mei opera actors knew how to play small gongs. In fact, at the time, there was a famous saying about Huang Mei opera: three players on the gongs and drums, and seven singers. This meant, of course, that a complete opera troupe needed three people to play gongs and drums and seven actors to sing. Gongs and drums were the only instrumental accompaniment for the singing and acting. Traditionally, the instruments for Huang Mei opera included big gongs, small gongs, drums, and cymbals. After Ding Yongjuan learned how to play the small gongs, his master Ye Bingchi began to teach him to sing a few traditional tunes. It was the beginning of his five-year-long vagabond life as an operatic artist. Within five years, he had learned to sing nearly thirty traditional operas. When Ding Yongjuan was eighteen years old, he graduated and left Ye Bingchi's opera troupe. He then began to perform. In other opera troupes, in the early Huang Mei opera troupes, after the students had finished their studies and were qualified to perform in opera troupes, they had to undergo a graduation ceremony before they were considered experienced enough to receive any pay. During the ceremony, the student had to first worship the ancestor of Huang Mei opera and then pay tribute to his master to make formal announcement of their tutor-pupil relationship. After the ceremony, Ding Yongjuan could finally perform in other opera troupes to make money. All Chinese opera performers paid their respects to Emperor Li Longji of the Tang Dynasty as the ancestor of opera, and Huang Mei opera was no exception. This was despite the fact that His Majesty had obviously had no idea what Huang Mei opera was, 
However, this had become a tradition that all Huang Mei opera artists respected. Yan Feng Ying, known as the Queen of Huang Mei Opera, had to go through a similar ceremony when she was 12 years old. The ceremony announced to the world that she was formerly a student under the instruction of Master Yan Yun Gao. The plot of the Yangtze River in 1931 didn't help Wang Mei Opera to get rid of its label as erotic opera, but the KMT government in Anqing was too busy to deal with it. Ding Yongxuan and his master Ye Bingzhi began to compete in Anqing City, and this made it possible for audiences to see wonderful operas one after another. Thus, famous Wang Mei Opera stars began to appear. Today, Wu Yu Street is the busiest commercial street in Anqing City. It was along this street that Ding Yongchuan entered Anqing City in 1926. Five years later, the street was broadened to become a 150 meter wide new road built with tar, the most advanced road construction material of the time. Thus, Wu Yu Street became the first tar sealed road in Anhui Province. Today, this street and the area in its proximity make up the commercial center of the city. The second time he entered Anqing City, Ding Yongjuan, now the leading star of Wang Mei Opera, built his fame again for his wonderful depictions of tragic female characters. Tale of Black Gold, Sue the Food Official, Yuzhou Crossing, Tale of Chicken Blood and Tale of a Silk Handkerchief were the five operas Ding Yongjuan excelled at, and the leading female character's name was always the same, Ms. Chen. This is why Ding Yongjuan was nicknamed the best actor for the five Ms. Chens. Five years later, Ding Yong Chui made a successful debut in Shanghai for his performance in the role of Chen Sai Jin in Tale of a Silk Handkerchief. In 1968, Ding Yongjuan died in his adopted hometown of Anqing. He had made an extraordinary contribution to the development of Huang Mei Opera, but he was not the only member of his family who was involved in the Huang Mei Opera industry. For three generations, the Ding family had worked in Huang Mei Opera, making it more and more popular. Ding Yongjuan was the one who brought Huang Mei Opera to the stage in Anqing City. And this was the beginning for this opera of the countryside to enter into maturity in the big cities. <laughs> 